I wanted to take a couple minutes to share about my pregnancy with Elliot and her birth story. Elliot means our God has answered, which we thought was really appropriate because we found out we were pregnant with Elliot a few months after our miscarriage. And pregnancy after miscarriage is hard and it's scary because there's nothing we did to cause the miscarriage, so it feels like you have no control, like there's nothing you can do to prevent it from happening again. So we prayed a lot and we just trusted that everything would be okay. Um, we had our first ultrasound and heard her heartbeat and that kind of let us breathe a little bit easier knowing that the pregnancy was viable and everything looked okay. But of course we were still nervous uh, moving forward. I was really sick in my first trimester. I was nauseous all the time and was vomiting probably five times a day. Things like emptying the dishwasher or showering or <laughs> trying to fold laundry, you know, simple things would make me sick and throw up. So I wasn't exercising, just trying to get through the day. And this was especially challenging because we were in the process of moving. So we were going through tons of stuff, trying to pack boxes and it's hard to do when you're really sick. <laughs> but we made it through the first trimester and sold our house, we were able to move down to North Canton where we are now, and we had our anatomy ultrasound, which we found out she was a girl, we found out she had all her pieces and parts and was healthy, so we were over the moon, so excited, just really, really happy to be having another daughter. I think it's such a privilege and honor to raise women, so I was so excited to find out that Gwen was getting a sister, and at this point in my pregnancy, I was having a lot of back pain, pelvic pain, swelling, pressure, just not feeling good. <laughs> this pregnancy was honestly really, really tough, but again, just we were so, so thankful that she was healthy and everything looked good. Every week that went by, we were breathing a little bit easier, knowing that her chance of survival was higher and higher and higher, and at 34 weeks, she was head down in the right position, so we knew that things looked good there. She stayed that way, which was awesome. And I think anyone that's had a baby before you can relate, you get to that point where you are just done being pregnant. <laughs> and I hit that around 36 weeks, 37 weeks, and I was really hopeful she would come a little bit early. With Gwen, I had her three days early, so I figured, you know, my second pregnancy, she would come early. Not the case. <laughs> um, she, her due date was September 12th, and the week leading up to that, Sunday night, I started having some Braxton Hicks contractions. They weren't painful, but they started being pretty consistent. So I started timing them. Uh, after about three hours, they were four to five minutes apart and very, very consistent. So I decided, you know, this might be it. I am going to try to get some rest. So I laid down. About four in the morning, I woke up with uncomfortable contractions. They were still about four minutes apart and not painful, but uncomfortable. So I got up, walked around a little bit, drank some water, took a shower. And by seven o'clock, they were starting to get painful. So I didn't want to sit still during them. I was up walking around. So I really thought, you know, this is nine hours of contractions. This, this is it. And as they started to get more painful, they spaced out a little bit and then went away. So that was a little disheartening thinking this was it and then they were gone. The next day I had six hours of uncomfortable contractions. The day after that I had about three and a half hours of uncomfortable contractions and I just started thinking, is this baby ever gonna come? <laughs> Where is she? I had my 40 week appointment that Thursday and my doctor checked me, I was one centimeter dilated, 70% of face, so my cervix was pretty soft. And she asked me, when do you wanna have this baby? And I thought, well, last week would have been great. <laughs> I was just so ready to meet her. She said that she was at the hospital that night and she was gonna check for availability, came back in the room and said that she could induce me that day. I was so excited called my husband, called my parents, told my sisters, my close friends, you know, it's baby day. <laughs> I was so, so happy. Went home, packed the hospital bag, got the house ready, took Gwen to my in-laws, and we headed to the hospital. We um, got checked in. They started the Pitocin about 6.30 at the lowest rate. Every half hour they can increase it. 
And so I started having sporadic contractions. Um, my sister was gonna come join us at the hospital and I told her, you know, things are going really slow. I'm not really having contractions. So, you know, it's probably gonna be a long night. <laughs> so she expected to come to the hospitals, hang out for a little bit and then go home and probably meet the baby the next day. So by the time she got there, so I think by 8.30 I was having regular contractions and they were getting intense quickly. So by, by the time they were regular and painful, it was 8.30. And they, doctors came back to check me about 9.30, 10 o'clock, and I was five centimeters dilated. And I was back and forth whether I wanted an epidural or not. I was really thinking, you know, it depends how long I'm in labor. And they broke my water. I told them I would wait for the epidural and see. And the, I think the next like three or four contractions just got miserable just so much pain I was cursing and crying and I just remember looking at my sister and my husband and I told them like guys I'm scared like this is this is horrible <laughs> um, and even between contractions I wasn't getting relief I still had burning across my back and through my thighs just so uncomfortable so I had them page anesthesia told them I, I want to get the epidural I could not be in this much pain for hours um, so I'm sitting there having the most intense contractions I've ever experienced and my nurse was incredible. She was in my face with me, just coaching me through it and I, I really felt in control during those because she was just so, so awesome. Um, but I was sitting there as they're putting the needle in my back and my nurse told me afterward that she could tell from my, my rhythm strips that I was completely dilated at that point. So I was in transition in the most con intense contractions possible while I'm trying to sit still get my epidural. <laughs> Um, the good part about that was that as my body was ready to push, I was completely relaxed because I wasn't in pain anymore. So it really let things open up naturally and I didn't have any tearing, any, didn't need any stitches, nothing like that. I pushed through two contractions and she was here. So that was beautiful. I was really relaxed. I was excited to meet her. So it was just awesome that I could get to a place of not having pain and just push and meet her so so easily um, she came out she was six pounds two ounces and perfect <laughs> we were so thrilled so uh, active labor was all of three hours like, again the contraction started at 8 30 at night she was out by 11 37 and we're so happy she's here we're just excited to be a family of four i'm so happy that you guys have been so supportive and awesome i really appreciate you and yeah, thanks for following along.